Nobody stays happy for long, honey. And I'm like, come on through, cookie. I want to pull my soapbox, that's basically Let's talk about drag and all its forms. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for episode 7, season 4 of Empire. Listen, like I said, nobody stays happy forever around these parts. Not at all. But, let's talk about happy stuff. We got Jamal and Warren in the studio with Lucius, and they were basically helping him get back on track with playing the piano. He was, um, they were working through his whole color thing and putting it into him, you know, going back to the piano. And it was really working. It was cool. Um, the time that Lucius is actually spent around Warren, Lucius actually likes Warren. And he's taken to this whole thing with Warren. And he's so open to this thing with Warren and Jamal. And Cookie is not. Cookie's like, mm -mm, you don't know him. And she got a side eye going. She's like, you need to watch him. I don't know. Something about him just ain't right. You're damn right, Cookie. It ain't. It ain't. You know a mother knows. She knows. He full of that old shit. But I said, okay. So we got that going on. Then you got some folks that think they, they think they happy. Angelo and Anika, they just got out on the town with baby, with Bella, like she theirs. Posing for the pop, honey, like they are a couple. And, you know, they all in the playground. The poor little white woman don't know no better. Sure. Oh, yes, you are a wonderful couple. You're lovely. Oh, she got her daddy's ass. Baby, that damn Hakeem was sitting over there. Look, at he was like, child, kill him. I'll kill him. <laughs> I'm like, child, calm down. And uh, that damn thirsty told him, if you don't simmer down before you go to jail, calm down with your stocking ass. But I said, child, they grinning and smiling at him. And Hakeem was like, okay, smile now, cry later. I know that's right. Now, down there, down to the uh, Empire, you got Eddie. And some of the folks ain't really feeling Eddie. Eddie works them like workhorses, okay? And, you know, Lucius works them hard, but Lucius is Lucius. They don't really know Eddie like that, so they're not really, they ain't felt him. And all through the episodes, you can see that uh, Portia has actually tried to, Portia's boyfriend is like the head of the producers and engineers. He's like the head one. And Portia's trying to talk to Cookie. She's trying to talk to Cookie. She's trying to talk to Lucia. She's trying to talk to... And to Andre, every time she tried to talk to somebody about what's been going on, and Becky too, you know, they are just blowing them off. They're like blowing her off. For some reason or another, she always ends up getting blown off. So eventually, all of this leads to a strike. The staff folk and the engineers all went on a strike. It was a whole mess. And Eddie was basically telling Cookie, oh, don't, don't fold to the strike. Don't fold. Just you got to hold out. Bring some new people. Just that other cookies like, nah, this don't sound like a good idea. We treat these people like family and they're feeling like they're not family. This is dangerous. It's a dangerous place to be. So Cookie was trying to listen to Eddie and I'm like, girl, Eddie's getting ready to destroy your business with this bullshit. Now the one thing that it did work well for when everybody left and went out on strike uh, Lucius was like, I don't have no engineers and, and no, you know, no nobody to work with. I don't have any musicians. And he's like, you know what, if you were, if you're really going back to being the old Lucius, you wouldn't need nobody but you and that piano. So that did spark something in him. So it worked good for that. But um, we wasn't having that. Cookie said, okay, enough. She put her foot down. She said, I can't do this. I can't do business like that, Eddie. That don't work. I'm going to have to, I'm gonna have to, to, to put my pump on your neck. She went, pulled everybody in the room, talked to them all. 
you know, gave us some examples about family and how sometimes people you don't like, you don't like your family that much at times. But when you all you got, you got to fight the good fight. She talked to everybody and gave them their little motivational speech, won them all over, and they ended the strike. Portia said, we done, we cool. They ended the strike. So that was cool. It was interesting. Um, Warren and Jamal was out. And that Warren trying to turn our Jamal out, honey. Now, our Jamal, he got a hot dick. Okay? And we know that. He got a hot dick and a hot ass, honey. He be out there a little bit. But uh, he, I got him out there talking about picking somebody up from the bar. We're going to do a threesome and all this. I said, ah, ah, Jamal, we don't do that. And you know it. Threesome always ends to a no some, honey. It's just the way it is. It always start off with three. It might end up with six or seven. But you always end up by your damn self in the end. Especially when you done already got felons. But yeah, Warren and got all this together. Then they found this real sharp little boy. Off one of them little sites. Hey, he was sharp. Oh, he was sharp. Baby, that was that old nasty uh, Warren, one of them, honey. He was over there rubbing up, filling up. And Jamal was sitting over there, baby, feeling some kind of way. Baby, she was feeling hot up underneath her collar and not the way that Warren was, honey. He was eating them grapes and he was mad slamming around over there. So Warren was like, oh, okay, okay. Called it off. Told the guy, thank you for coming. But no, my partner ain't feeling it. You know, go ahead. And before he got the guy off a of line, they were, she was trying to grab this little dirty white boy from the damn bar. I said, who is he? It was like, he was, and he was the bartender. I said, oh, no, ma'am. And Jamal told him, was like, really? That's cliche. A bartender from the bar? I said, I don't give a damn if it's cliche or not. She looks like she needs a bath, honey. Leave her where she is. So they found the cute little boy, little Hispanic boy from off of um, the little site. And I was like, damn, I thought Jamal was going to do it. Because you remember Jamal's last boyfriend was Hispanic. I was like, child, he's kind of fat. I don't know. I'm going to fall forward in and go on. Uh, anyway, but whatever. So they asked him out and that was fine. So Warren ends up telling Jamal, he's like, I'm so sorry. You know, this and the other. I ain't trying to mess everything up. But then he kept saying to him, just know that what, no matter what happens, no matter what goes down, that I love you. I said, he's hooked. He got him. He got him, honey. He has him. I said, oh, shit, here we go. So we got that going on. Hold on to that for a minute. Andre can't get in touch with his little DA friend. Here she done been involved in a little scuffle, baby, in a little shootout where she actually had to kill someone. He got all up in his feelings. He popping pills like... 40 going north and he getting himself all upside. He finally gets with her and, you know, told her, I was worried about you, this, that, and the other. I'm falling for you, blah, 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 blah. And poured his heart out and told, I told him, I know you don't trust me. You know, told her, I know you don't trust me, this, that, and the other. And she ended up telling him everything didn't happen the way they said it happened on the news. I planted that gun on that guy. I killed him. And I planted that gun on him. And Andre's just looking at her and said, well, sometimes things happen. I say crazy motherfucker. You ain't doing your word. You killed your damn uncle. Um, she said, see, so now you know I, I do trust you. Now you know something about me that could put me behind bars forever. You know, and um, now you know I trust you. I said that. She got him. Got him. I was like, oh, well. So you got that. He's about, I want to take you and introduce you to my family. I said, mm, that's the first mistake. Anyway, so that was that. Um, next thing you know, we see this was the best. This was the best when you know can't nobody be happy. At the end, old Diana Dubois, she meeting up with, uh, with Warren. Oh, hold on for one second. Earlier, Lucius went to see Anika. And told Anika, listen, let's make a deal. If you sign the joint custody parent agreement, I will make Bella a heir to the throne alongside of the boys. So it'll be all three boys and Bella. Because I know that's what you wanted her to be, the single heir to the throne. Well, that's not possible. But I could make her one of the four. She'll be very rich, little girl, anyway. 
more than what you'll ever have because you're nobody, bitch. So the nigga's like, well, I'll think about it. He says it out in solidarity with that. I need to have a family visit. We want to see Bella. So she says she's going to set up the, uh, she said, that's fine. When they come to the, the little thing to see Bella, said so they have to be at a proper place. Ain't no Bella, baby. It's just Diana Dubois sitting there with Warren. And her and Warren is going back and forth. And Warren's telling her, you know, I'm out. I, I'm not even trying to do this with you no more. She'll say, mm, I thought you might would fail. And you done messed around and fell in love with him. But that's okay. Cause I got some shit for your ass. Honey, and the next thing you know, the whole family is walking to the door. Baby and Jamal's giving Warren, what are you doing sitting here, honey? And she says, I want to introduce you all to my nephew. And this, that, and the other. His job was to make you fall in love with him. And he couldn't even do that. This, that thing, and the other. She said some little shit about Bella and Anika. But we never got through all that because we ended up seeing Warren actually getting to meet the other Jamal. See, because he has met that Jamal who is soft and gay and pretty and sings. He didn't ever meet the Jamal that hung the man over the goddamn balcony about fucking with Lucia. Y'all remember that Jamal? From season one? Well, baby, that's who Warren ended up running into in that restaurant. When I tell you Jamal beat his goddamn ass, he tore his ass. I said, oh, Jamal, don't do it. Kick him again. He beat him down, bashed him in the face, knocked him over, scarred up his pretty face, had he stomped him all out. Here goes here go Diana Dubois when he was stomping him out at him. She said, ooh. I said, you know what? And then when they went to go walk out at him, Cookie going to lean over there and say to Diana Dubois, she's going to say, you know what? I'm coming for you, bitch. And they walked on out. Lucius was the last one standing there, and he looked at him, and then he walked out. That damn Diana Dubois looked over there on that floor at Warren and going to say, see? <laughs> And you know what? She is a mess. Felicia Rashad is playing the hell out of this role. Just messy as hell. So they went on. Then Cookie, I was like, no, Cookie, now you out of order, bitch. She then basically, you know, Lucius comes out and put her in the car and told her, you know, I really wanted to just stomp his ass out with my damn prosthetic leg. And she looked at him and said, now the old Lucius, would have done that. It wouldn't even been a conversation. He would have done that. And I was like, no, Cookie, I don't even know why you... <laughs> so now you're missing him actually being as vicious as he used to be? Come on, Cookie. Chill. Chill, for real. She wants some other shit. But anyway, that's where we ended out at. I was like, oh, they done threw poor goddamn Warren under the bus. Anyway, so that's it. I'll catch y'all guys next week. Later.